flip yourself sideways on the mat. We're going to change your plane of reference. Crisscross your hands and hold on to your ankles. The right arm can hold on to the left. The left arm can hold on to the right. Keep your connections if possible. Start to take your feet apart. And this way you only get to go as far as you can measure up and as you can handle it. Bend your knees slightly. Take your arms, bring them into Gomukhasana. Use your elbows to lift up. Take your arms, line them with your ears. If you make your hands into fists, it gives you more punch. Take your elbows, put them in your knees, and pull your knees apart. We're going to just play this pose this back and forth. Put your arms in Gomukhasana. So now bend deep, move forwards into your potential. Then take your arms, line up with your ears, bend your knees. Your hands can hold on to your knees when you crisscross. Then they can work down to your ankles. And when you unfold yourself, take your feet a little further apart to start manipulating a hemisphere of vision. Take your right hand, put it on the floor in front of you. Put it on the fingertips. Take your left hand and bring it up in the air. Maintain the stability on the trinity. And then you start adjusting the vision. You can put the left hand on the floor and take the right hand up. Every time you have a vision on the right, you're going to have a reflected memory on the left. You can leverage it by taking your top arm, thread it through the bottom arm, hold on to the opposite ankle, take the bottom arm up, and make sure you catch another vision. And then you can bring it back down, and you can find your frame by remeasuring. So now you can start swinging back and forth like a door hinge. Anywhere you look, there's a vision. What's your vision? What angle do you see? Every time you see something, there's going to be a reaction and an insight. You start playing with your form like a piece of thread, knowing that you're trying to find the way to weave through yourself. So you can bend your knees, you can lock your elbows together, you can open it by taking the arms out, you can open it by pulling your knees apart. Let's start moving you to the side. Put your hands on the floor, and as you walk yourself over to the right, turn your right foot out and left foot in. So bend the front leg at the knee and fit it in the armpit. Put the right hand out to the side a little. Take your left hand up. When the right hand is on the floor, you can look out at the left. Leverage your way around so that you get a different view. What was in front of you is now on the side of you. What is on the side of you is now in front of you. Turn it so that you can do it in its revolved form. So take the top arm, bring it down. Take the bottom arm, bring it up. You can measure the pose out by fitting the knee in the armpit. And when the left hand is on the floor, you can look at it the right. So now what's in front of you is behind you. What is behind you is in front of you. And you are still in the center. Then once you've had it, you can take the bottom hand, hold on to the ankle. Flip your front foot. The top arm holds on to the opposite foot. Bend your knees. And then take the left hand up. Know that to build a mandala is to build a sphere around you, a sacred circle where you're the center of your sphere. Take the top arm and you bring it down, cross over, and then you can take it to the second side. Turn the left foot out, flip the right foot in, walk yourself over to the left, keep the front knee bent. You can put the left hand on the floor and take the right hand up. Leverage to see what's in front of you on an angle. Know that if your heart is looking at 12 o'clock, then your back can look at 6 o'clock. You can turn it the other way, take the bottom arm, bring it up. Then you have that ability to make your twist and adjust your vision because you've adjusted a measure. You're really designed to be able to fit your balls in your mitts, to fit your plugs in your sockets, to be formal and functional and fitting. Bring it down. Take your right hand, hold on to your left foot. Take your left hand, hold on to your right foot. Flip yourself back to the front. Bring your right hand over your left hand. Hold on to the opposite ankle. Flip the left foot out. Twist and adjust your vision. Compound bow. So the kneecap supporting the shoulder. The hand holding on to the ankle. You leverage the other hand so you can open yourself up. Once you've done it, you can flip it back. Keep your connections if possible. And then flip the left hand on the outside. Turn the right foot out. Twist. And now you're on the compound bow on the second side. It gives you the opportunity to have a deeper leverage, to make more connections. Every time you make a tighter connection, you engage in a more nuanced conversation. So once your arms crisscross, you've already established your arms to be able to take Gomukhasana. The elbows leverage your chin. As you open up your front, it opens up the front of your throat. You flush out your thyroid. It gives you more capacity, more vision, more air. Your hands crisscross. You can work down to your ankles when you go and fold. These are all different ways of starting to organize yourself in a hemisphere of vision. And then we start moving you into the sphere of vision. Start to go into the full mandala. So take your hands, put them on the floor. And as you walk yourself over to the right, turn your right foot out and left foot in. Bring your feet a little closer together. Make it easy. Now double flip. You can put the left hand on the floor and take the right hand up. Play for that fluency of being circumstantial. So you have a new front, 
You have a new bag, and you can leverage new visions based on this angle of perception. Take the top arm and you bring it down, turn it. So flip it the opposite way, cross over, and then you can take it to the second side. Turn the left foot out, flip the right foot in, double flip, walk yourself over to the left, take the opposite hand of the leg that's in front of you, put those fingers on the floor, and then take the other arm up. Take it as a twist. You organize a different vision, a different hearing, a different position in time and space. What is now in front of you was before your back. What is now your back was before your front. So now undo it. Now the fun is to undo it fast like a salad spinner. So get around yourself, get around yourself. Come back to the front, bring your feet a little closer together, drop the head, lift the tail, shift your weight forwards. And then once you understand your hemisphere perception, then develop more flippancy and more fluency and totally turn around and now make the back your front, make the front your back. Start to develop the second hemisphere, which will eventually give you the sphere of influence. Crisscross your hands and hold onto your ankles. And once you have the tenacity of holding your hands on your feet, like a bird's claws holding onto a tree, open it up one more time again because it's by virtue repetition that Rune develops technique, ups one's insights, refines one's way of doing something. Bend your knees, take your arms, bring them into Gomukhasana. Lift up your chin, it'll leverage you forward, and bring your arms out and opening up your groin and sense setting up a squat that is leveraged from the center of a sphere. Because the goal really is to be the center of your circumstances, to be able to leverage your situation, to be able to use your form, not just for the information, but to become formidable, to become competent, enabled, within the confines of your form. You get a more peripheral vision when you start to leverage the hemisphere twist. Spin like you're playing with a revolving door. You can play the vision to catch more of what is going on behind you. In front of you is potential, behind you is memory, and everything going on around you is circumstantial. So the art, occupy the center of your circumstance and develop the ability to be equidistantly radiant to what goes on around. Compound bow. Keep your connections if possible. Flip the left foot out. Twist and adjust your vision. The back leg supports your back and the potential is stretched out so you can see more of what's really in front of you. Flip yourself back to the front. Recalibrate. Bring your left arm over your right arm and then you can take it to the second side. One piece of the practice is the folding, the fluency, the flippancy. Another piece is really that organizing yourself to get around yourself. A mandala is a circle, a sacred sphere, and it is the circumstances that are around you. Flip yourself back to the front. Put your hands on the floor, and as you walk yourself over to the right, turn your right foot out, turn the left foot in, double flip. Take your left hand, put it on the floor in front of you. Take your right hand and bring it up in the air. Twist and adjust your vision. You don't just organize the form, you organize the vision. Bring it down, cross over, hold onto your ankles. Once you're really double crossed, keep upping the factor. 